Like many of us, I wonder about the existence of things, the regularity, patterns and symmetries in nature in some ways, and apparent chaos and randomness in other ways. Is this a product of our perception, or is it reality? As a visual artist, I went in search of a scientist to whom I can discuss these matters. Someone who can relate to a non-scientist and communicate in a non-specialized language. One day I crossed paths with Bill Van Megan, a physics professor who is exploring the creation of patterns and regularity in nature. These are some of his responses to my question concerning perception and reality. We are what we perceive. Nature uh, 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 is our particular take on it. We respond, we have evolved in a way that allows us to make sense of that that is around us. We have to make sense of that that is around us, otherwise we would not be able to adapt to that that is around us. Everybody, or almost everybody at some stage must have wondered, what am I doing here? How did I get to be here? You look around us and we see all these patterns. You mentioned the water waves. Example, we see regularity in the structure of plants. Quite aside from uh, the structures that we ourselves make, the buildings in which we live. But nature makes a lot of Everything we see around us is organised in some fashion. We pick out these patterns. And so, whilst, okay, uh, uh, not everybody, but I dare say most people who've given it some thought now are comfortable or accept the concept that somehow we are made up of bits. And most people also are aware that we call these bits atoms and molecules. And here we are, you know, these trillions of atoms had somehow, by some sequence of random encounters, grown to something that's able to walk and talk, and, and then perform organised motions. So we are organised, our movements are highly organised. This conversation has some semblance of organisation to it. But yet, we, this is all based on this act of faith that at the microscopic level, it's a random jumble. Curious, isn't it? Now this is really, this is, this is, this is bizarre. That is the, the view. That is the, the current thinking. And this is what the scientist offers that all of this regularity that we see around us, all these patterns, be it the rings in a tree, be it the, uh, uh, the way in which atoms combine into molecules, into complex molecules, amino acids, proteins, DNA, this is somehow nothing but a sequence of accidents. And, and this, I guess, I question. I would question that. The same way that I would question that you are not got here by uh, a sequence of, 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 of completely random events. And is there something that we have missed in the consideration of this? Is there something that we have missed in this experiment? So maybe there's a, another perspective, another way of looking at it, something we've missed. However, if, if we want a wider perspective, then we have to step away from our comfort zone, step away from 
uh, the present knowledge to which we've grown accustomed. It's made us comfortable. The things we know, the harmony in which we are presently waiting, we have to step away from that. Put, the, put your current uh, beliefs and prejudices and hypotheses and so forth. Question them. Don't necessarily discard them. Just, just put them to one side. Keep questioning them. So we make observations, we gain knowledge, and uh, that knowledge can then be used as a springboard to look more widely, and at the same time it can also uh, uh, compromise our ob objectivity. Okay. It builds up expectations and preconceptions. Uh, if we if we if we use that knowledge to develop principles and hypotheses, so we try and make sense of the things that we see. We attach belief systems to them. And here I, mm. I, I consider faith belief systems in the same basket as scientific hypotheses or principles. And those 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 guiding principles can then be used to somehow uh, encapsulate the things that we have seen and can be used to describe much of what we see around us. But the danger is that we use those principles, those beliefs, hypotheses, models, theories and so forth to straitjacket what we see around us. So in that sense, uh, what we perceive or what we can make sense of is really only just that that is around us, that aspect or projection of reality that we can quantify, that we can count. From that we cannot infer that that is reality. It is merely a projection. Knowing, uh, knowing what the numbers are, uh, just because we are able to make use of those numbers in order to make something and control, is not understanding. At least not by my way of thinking. Just because we are able to club something into a corner, doesn't mean to say that we understand it. I should think probably the contrary. If you understood it, you probably wouldn't need to club it into a corner. It strikes me as, as almost banal that we have all of these, the products of science engines and all the gadgets in this, this room is filled with stuff that's based on principles laid down by physicists. We have all of the products, all of the technological products and advances. Uh, we've seen the Industrial Revolution. Uh, we have now this, the high-tech revolution. Computers, the laser. We can travel at high speeds, we can go to the moon, yet we still presume that the process by which a liquid freezes, one of the most elementary forms of organisation, is a random process. We don't understand how it occurs. We know what happens in excruciating detail. We can zing massive microscopes 
and watch things move. But we still don't understand the mechanism. We still have the question, what is the mechanism by which a raindrop forms? A snowflake? So somehow there's something missing in the way that we look at this. We look at nature with a grid in our hands. There is nature, there is the reality. But all I have is this grid. A grid of regularly spaced lines or squares or whatever. And that comes through. Well, that's fine. So what we, what we get, what we perceive, what we can make sense of is the stuff that comes through the grid. But that's only one projection of what is out there. So it's important sometimes to put the grid to one side, to take your theory, hypothesis, your faith, your belief, just put it to one side and see what else is there.